welcome back to BRTV Small Business Saturday and the celebration of the small business community. Uh, I'm Jim Benson. We are here at Old Line Bistro, 11,011 uh, Baltimore Avenue, uh, here in Beltsville, Maryland. Uh, beautiful uh, uh, fine wine and spirits and also a bistro that serves good food and wonderful service. We are here live today uh, providing you with information uh, and resources about small business and encouraging everyone to support their small business in their community. Uh, small businesses uh, hire and create two out of the three jobs in this country and are the real engine for our economic success uh, as Americans. So we encourage you to do that, uh, keep the faith and uh, keep uh, shopping small today. Uh, just a couple of tidbits. What can you do for Small Business Saturday? Well, if you're a shopper, you can participate by going to your small businesses, seek them out, find the special deals, find out who those folks are. They're not only a business in your community, they're also a neighbor. They might be someone who you can uh, relate to on more than just the business level, and you might find an, another friend, a neighbor, uh, someone else that you can join in who shares uh, other interests. So there's lots of benefits to uh, being a, a patron of small business in your community other than just the economic one. So we encourage you to, to go out and seek those folks out. Also, for small business owners themselves, uh, there is lots of information online uh, from the Small Business Administration, who's a co-sponsor for our program today, about holiday marketing and tips, things to do for special events, uh, how to uh, uh, make a uh, how to market uh, your business on a limited budget, and also how to plan your retail marketing for the holidays. Uh, and also how to use a special event, something like this, on whatever scale is appropriate for your business. These uh, uh, resources are available online, and you can check with BRTV or the Small Business Administrations online uh, for details on that, as well as uh, training opportunities that help small businesses uh, add these skill sets and opportunities to their inventory. Uh, and now we'd like to go ahead and continue our program uh, with an, uh, an interview uh, with Mr. Michael Davis. Uh, Michael, welcome to the program. Glad to have you here today. Uh, Michael Davis is a, uh, I'm pleased to say, a retired uh, Army Colonel uh, and uh, as Air Force, that was my parent organization uh, after World War II, both before our time, thank you. And uh, so we are, uh, 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 say, brothers in that regard from the uniform days and it's a pleasure to have a fellow veteran here today. Uh, uh, Michael is the founder and CEO of Davis Page Management Systems, LLC, in Annandale, Virginia. Uh, they specialize in program management, uh, hardware, and provide life cycle service to that process. Uh, and uh, Michael's going to give us a little information about that today and some of the history that brought uh, your company into, into being. How did, uh, how did you go from being a, uh, 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 an Army colonel uh, into uh, the management, uh, pr uh, pr program management business? Probably by luck. <laughs> uh, basically what happened was I retired and the first job that was given to me was uh, my former boss gave me a task of forming my own company within 30 days. And from that, uh, 30 days later, I went in, he gave me a contract and said, now let's see what you do with it. And I was lucky. Uh, 14 years later, we have over 300 employees plus. We're located in five different locations, seven different locations across the United States. That's uh, quite a bit of growth in, uh, in that time as well. Thank you. We, uh, we provide a host of services to a different wide range of customers from uh, organizations within the Department of Defense to Department of Homeland Security, Agriculture, Department of Commerce, and other government agencies, as well as commercial contracts. Those are some big uh, organizations to deal with. Absolutely. So you're Absolutely. in competition with other large named uh, groups who do similar types of work. Well, we've competed in full open competition with the uh, large companies like Booz Allen, the SAICs, Lockheed Martins, but also with other small businesses. And so it's very competitive out there, especially today in this environment. So we have to be on our toes all the time, trying to figure out new ways to not only win competition, but once you win those contracts, how to execute them. Right. Now, being uh, with 300 employees, you're above the threshold for most small businesses. So those set-asides that the government has uh, as a like a 3% target for small business contracting doesn't apply to you. You're, you're going up against uh, everybody else that's out there. Well, we're in, in some what they call NAIC codes. We are it's still in the small business category. We're service-disabled, 8A-owned company. Uh, we've been in the program now going on seven years. We graduated out of the 8A program in 2015. Uh, our our NAIC codes, our range, will allow us to compete against those companies with similar size 
and in revenue as well as employees. Okay. So we can compete in that small business uh, category, but also then we compete in large business category depending upon what type of work and service that we're providing. Well, that gives you some real flexibility, and I imagine, uh, you know, as a relatively small business overall, that's an important aspect to be flexible. Well, absolutely, but it's also so competitive because you know uh, smaller companies have a small amount of resources and dollars to work with, especially in the business development side of the house. So when you go out to market, you have limited resources, so you have to manage those resources quite well in order to win those contracts that we're going after, especially with larger companies with larger budgets. Well, and smaller smaller businesses would have a hard time. They would not be able to get the uh, uh, the efficiency of scale that you would get uh, by buying even hardware, hardware in large quantities and get some reduction. They're going to have smaller numbers, and that's going to increase their cost. So, you know, some hardware is going to cost the same for a small business as it would for a large business, uh, except for that. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But what we try to do to offset that is team with other small businesses that may have niche in certain markets. And then what that allows us to do is to come in at a lower price. Or we take on a different type of strategy. We'll team with larger vendors and uh, establish some type of contracting arrangement that will allow us to work with them for over a four or five year period. And working with, uh, through that process, we try to find ways that we can reduce the price. I see. Now, you mentioned team a couple of times when we were talking beforehand as well, kind of like a guard on a basketball team where you, you feed uh, <laughs> other players and you see the openings. And how does that work uh, from your business perspective? Well, what normally happens is a customer defines what the requirements are. So if you take in, for example, if you use the Department of Defense and an Army contract, they want a particular product or a service, then they'll ask us to come in and define what they help them define what that requirement is, give them a concept plan, and then from that, what we do as a systems integrator, we identify each of those different elements as part of a total life cycle approach, bring in the appropriate team member that can provide that type of service, and then give them a series of products ranging anywhere from the product itself, the hardware system, our training, our logistics support that is necessary to support that product. So the key for us is try to find good quality teammates, whether they're small, mid or large companies that can provide that type of service that that customer needs. Well, that's important, uh, again, so that you can not only take care of the customer's needs now, but also always planning with an, an idea that this equipment and, and uh, process will take them into the future as well. Absolutely, absolutely, because they're always trying to find ways to be more efficient and utilize less resources in executing our, that service or that product that they're looking for. Uh, you mentioned a uh, little earlier about the small business. You mentioned a Global Business Network Association. Tell us a little bit about that. That's something that you have put together. Well, five years ago, uh, four uh, friends of mine, uh, all of them are business owners, small business owners, decided we wanted to come together and find ways that we could help each other grow up each other's business. And to do that, we also decided we had to bring in other small businesses as well. So what we formed was an organization called the Global Business Network Association. It now consists of over 55 small businesses, ranging in different types of services and products, all the way from communications to security to logistics and IT support. So you really need, you need that diversity to help cover all the things that you would be asked to do. Absolutely, absolutely. And when you look at the type of contracts that are coming out today where there are multiple award uh, uh, IDIQ type contracts with a lot of different services under one single contract, with a lot of task orders, then you want to have a team that can provide all of the different type of services and, and meet all of the different type of requirements that they're looking for. So and you, to work on them at the same time. Many times these exactly. things need to come together, like fixing a meal. You got to have everything to come out hot at the same time. Hopefully, Absolutely. like the other day for Thanksgiving, we we did. You know. Absolutely. So Absolutely. that takes some real coordination. In the Global Business Network Association, what we do is we bring in. Uh, we look at all different facets of a small business operation, anything from accounting uh, to uh, legal support, uh, technical support, even bring in government contracting offices to have them come in and talk to us about what are the f potential opportunities that are out there that we ought to be looking at, not only near term, but two years, three years out, so that we can better manage our resources to go after those targets of opportunity. We now, in our in our last four years, five years, we have sponsored a small business forum. And in that forum, what we do is we invite guest speakers from all of the different government agencies, 
and all of the subject matter experts across the different facets of go uh, government contracting to come in and talk to small businesses about what they can do to win uh, work. Where do you hold the form? Is it the same place or do you move that around? Uh, well, we've moved it around, uh, but majority of the time it has been in Virginia. In and, Virginia? And, yes, okay. it has, in Springfield, Virginia. Uh, how, what kind of resources did, do, did you take advantage of uh, when you were starting your business that uh, you might recommend and, and or what people should know, small business owners should know about how to use those resources to their best advantage? Well, one of the first things is because I was in, uh, in government, I was a program manager, I built combat weapon systems for the Department of Defense. I kind of had an inside track, inside knowledge about where to go and who to talk to. Sure. But a small business uh, owner and this representative, the business development representative, should immediately go talk to the small business representative on each of the installations or the government agencies. Because that person can tell them where the work is, what type of work it is, and who they should be talking to, to include name and telephone number. That becomes really important. Go to all of the different type of symposiums that may be out there that are hosted by those government agents. Then the next thing you want to do is, if you target a government agency, study them, know their requirements, make sure that when you go talk to that small business representative, you know exactly what their needs may be. And then you can tailor what you do to their particular needs. Right. It's know, it's know your customer and know, know your, your audience customer. and know your uh, audience. and watch what they do and the, kind of the history of their contracting effort and kind of get a good sense for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And having a name and a number is uh, certainly a big help because so many times, uh, you know, just our, our technology today puts you through a menu, an automated system, and it's hard to talk to a person who can answer, you know, straight questions one-on-one. So -on -one. that's why you go to that small business but, representative because so that, that so person once again, that. it's that network. It's and, network. And so, and you've done that with this uh, global uh, association because it's businesses to businesses helping each other. Absolutely. More eyes on different targets allow us to come together and then discuss about those different targets and see if we can come up with a good capture plan to going after those contracts and win the work. And that's been for the last five years you said you set that up? Absolutely. We've had a small business conference over the last five years and it's been well received and well participated in. Yeah. Is it a one day or two day conference? It's or? a one day conference. Normally it begins about uh, nine o'clock in the morning and ends about four o'clock in the evening. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you hold that at your facility or uh, No, we offices? normally hold it at a larger facility. We held it at, the, last year we held it at the Waterford in Springfield, mm -hmm. uh, Virginia, which, host, which was able to hold about uh, 300 uh, participants. Well, that sounds like a pretty good turnout then. Uh, so that's been proving to be very successful for you from that regard. Absolutely. And I, Absolutely. I, I had a feeling that maybe uh, since, you since you set up that uh, association, that also matches your uh, growth uh, in your own business uh, in terms of uh, you know spreading out the various offices. And the latest one is in Colorado Springs? Well, the latest one will be in Colorado mm -hmm. Springs. We hope to open that office up in about uh, two weeks. Oh, wow. That's uh, right around the corner. Absolutely. So you are very busy giving uh, birth to a new office down there. Absolutely. <laughs> do you get a, do you get involved uh, directly with that when these kind of things uh, come up? Well, as you know, military, <laughs> we always leave from the front, not from the rear. <laughs> So I'm definitely involved Hands in on. every day. Exactly, definitely involved in operations. What uh, what kind of advice would you give or encouragement to uh, going through the process of developing a small business and growing it and seeing that kind of success and 300 jobs? That's a lot of responsibility, and certainly, uh, you know, hats off to you for that because the ripple effect when you have a company with employees, you know, mm -hmm. uh, into their individual communities and neighborhoods uh, is significant. Well, the, one of the first things I I decided on was I was always going to be a partner with the community. So my responsibility in growing the company was to make sure that we provide, uh, win as many jobs as we can, provide employees and many others the opportunity to grow within our company. That's my responsibility. And as we just mentioned, I leave from the, from the front, not from the rear. Right. So I have to make sure that I'm involved in every aspect of the business to ensure that it's successful because our employees expect for us to do well. They have their own responsibilities, they have families, and so my responsibility is to make sure that we do what we're supposed to do so they can take care of their families, do the work, be uh, good in uh, executing their job, their task, and then if they do that, then Davis Page will continue to grow. Grow the company and grow the people in the company. In the company. And, uh, and then that helps take care of itself and moves you forward. So. Absolutely. So you, uh, do you focus a lot on uh, outside training uh, and things for your employees as well? Both. Yeah. Internal as well as external training. We do have a, a apprenticeship program. We have on-the-job training program. 
Uh, we do send our employees to college. Uh, we give them uh, monetary compensation for going to school. Wow, that's terrific. And so we do invest a lot back into our employees so that we can reap the benefits from that. We recognize that not every employee is going to stay with the company, but that's okay. Uh, our, as long as we do what we're supposed to do, the majority will. Right. Yeah. Right. And they will speak highly of you. There might be a variety of reasons that they would have to leave, but uh, Absolutely. Uh, they, you get a good reference as well as they do if they do a good job of what you've done for them. Good reputation spreads everywhere. Ab yeah, it takes a long time to build and it can quickly go away, but Absolutely. that's why it's a very valuable resource. Absolutely. Any other words of wisdom, uh, Michael, for our small business owners uh, and uh, shoppers out there today on Small Business Saturday? Well, it takes a lot of hard work to get where you're going, but uh, my mother, uh, bless her soul. She's uh, 81 years old. Wow. She's been in the barbershop business for over 57 years and she's still cutting hair. Is that right? And she's the one that taught me about business. So <laughs> uh, I have to say that uh, the one thing she always told me, always invest at least 10 cents out of a dollar back into your business. Oh, that's good. But pay yourself first, pay yourself and, and, first and put that money back in the and business. And use the money to go back in the business, yeah. and then you can grow it. And she knows all about one-on-one -on -one customer service Absolutely. and how important that is, to, because it's all about repeat uh, business on that score. Absolutely. Well, Michael, thank you very much for thank sharing you. your story with us today. Uh, great success, continued success with the other business opportunities, and, uh, and thank you again for serving you, our Jim. country. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back uh, after uh, take a short break. Hey, smart shopper, stop paying full price. Join the Consumers Win Savings Club and stretch your dollars every time you shop. Joining is simple. Just go to ConsumersWin.com. That's ConsumersWin.com and join our community mailing list. You'll start saving on deals right now. You can also get a Consumers Win Savings Club card to carry with you. What a great way to save money and help small businesses in your community to grow. Start saving today. Get the details at ConsumersWin.com. That's ConsumersWin.com, where you will master the art of shopping smart. Have you Googled yourself lately? As a small business owner, you serve as the face of your business to potential and existing clients. It's crucial that you put your best face forward by managing your online reputation. Before any prospective client decides to do business with you, it is highly likely that they will Google you. Google is not just a search engine, it's a reputation engine. Here are some tips to help you manage your online reputation. Protect yourself by Googling your name and the name of your business regularly. Use free monitoring tools like Google Alerts to be notified when there is any mention of you or your business. If you do find something negative, act swiftly by either cleaning it up or drowning it out. Clean it up by contacting the website owners and asking them to remove the negative information. Drown it out by posting positive information about you and your company using the various social media networks, blogs, and your own personal websites. Be sure to set the appropriate privacy settings on your social networking accounts and assume that any email or comment could end up in the public forum. At DC Livery, we are focused on building a lifelong relationship with our clients by providing them with reliable, courteous, professional, and secure ground transportation services. Whether it's a multi-vehicle roadshow, a sedan service for airport transfer, a limousine for corporate or private events, a wedding, or a prom or night on the town, you or your clients can enjoy the luxury and comfort of our meticulously maintained fleet. Wherever your business or travel plans take you, DC Livery can arrange all of your ground transportation with just one phone call. Major metro areas we service are Washington, D.C., New York Tri-State, Chicago, Philadelphia, Boston, Houston, Miami, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Paris, London, and many more in U.S. and worldwide. We offer sedans, SUVs, vans, stretch limousines, minibuses, and motor coaches, and utilize state-of-the-art traffic, flight monitoring, and GPS vehicle tracking systems. So call DC Livery to book your next ride. 303-566-5000.